What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop L. My name is Max and today is a special day because I can hear you guys thinking is that a Supra? <laughs> yes it is. This is a 1994 Toyota Supra and this car belongs to Rick who is the owner of Stipped Polish Point which is a company that specializes in restoring and well the name suggests it polishing cleaning cars and bringing them back to their former glory and he is really good at that and he has an awesome collection of cars so i want to start this review by thanking rick because this is amazing the fact that we get to drive this car on itself is amazing but then rick agreed to let us take it to the autobahn and drive it the way it should be driven so big thanks to rick I mean, you can tell he's a real petrol head because he lets us do this. He just wants to see this as well. And that is just amazing. So, of course, a process like this, bringing a car back to its factory condition, is an incredibly time-consuming and expensive process. But you can also buy the Stipped Polish Point products for your own car to clean up your car, to restore it. They have all kinds of products for interior, exterior, wheels, engine, whatever, they have it. So go check out the Stip Polish Point shop with a link in the description if you need anything to spruce up your car and bring it back to its former glory. So today I'm going to show you around it. I'm going to talk a bit about the stuff that Rick and his guys have done to this car. And after that, we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. This car, when it came out in the 90s, it ran from 1993 all the way to 2002 in Japan, that is. The Euro export versions stopped a bit earlier in most countries. This is a 1994 model, as I said, and it is a twin turbo version. So you also had a naturally aspirated version, but this is the 2JZ GTE version. And as you can see, it is in factory condition. That is what Rick is all about. He wants to bring this car back to the way it came out of the factory in 1994. And he has succeeded in doing that. Now, you have to excuse me for the bugs. This car has been painted completely, so it looks brand new. But, you know, you just can't. The bugs are just there. They keep flying around. And right when we arrive at a certain point, some bugs just decide to go super quickly in front of us. And we can't, we can't avoid them. So, usually what we do is we have like a little funeral with a moment of silence for the bugs that were unfortunately hurt in the making of this video, but also for ruining the paint and ruining the fact that this car looked like it came out of the factory yesterday. So we've got these super clear headlights. I mean, I don't even know what has been done. I am going to assume that everything is new like these headlights. This is also glass for the Euro spec cars. The Euro spec cars export versions were the highest spec versions available. And they also got this little intake on the hood, the scoop. That's just for the Euro spec cars to cool cylinders three and six or to aid cooling of cylinders three and six. And the car in general was super high tech and ahead of its time. For instance, I'm going to show you something very, very cool. The car has an active front spoiler. So this is the little spoiler lip, the black part. But then if we look underneath, you can see that this part, this here, this is active. So this lowers to improve downforce you can actually see a little light on the dash that lights up when it lowers it is absolutely magnificent i have not figured out a way to lower it while you're just standing still so i can't show you that but just picture it it's a little bit lower than this it looks awesome so in here we've got cooling intakes all yeah radiators behind that and then we arrive at the wheels. How retro are these wheels? Just 17 inch. That is the thing I love about this car. When it came out, it was a big beast. If you compared it to 
a Porsche or a Ferrari from that day, this was big and it had big 17 inch wheels and it was just a big beast. And nowadays it's pretty small. So are the wheels. I mean, 17 inches, nothing nowadays. And behind that, we've got upgraded brakes for the Euro spec cars as well. And they even restored the brake calipers to its original condition with these little stickers on there. You can't buy those anywhere anymore. So they just have this made to look exactly like it did when it was new. And that is the story of this car. Anything that can be restored is restored to its original condition anything that's missing or just gone beyond repair they source those parts around the world and if they can't find them then they have them made specifically to match the specification of the car that is how far they go and that is how much they love doing this basically it is an incredible process brakes though are not great rick told us that he had to brake from high speed and the brakes were just gone so these are new brakes again but he did tell us not to brake too hard from high speeds because then they are done not great those brakes and can you imagine this was even even an upgraded version over the regular Japanese spec cars. Moving on down the side, we've got a little intake here as well. And beautiful roof line. This is a convertible, as you can see. So this has a little Targa roof, but we're not going to open that today because I don't want to do anything that I can't undo. And then at the rear, of course, the legendary rear of the Supra. This is incredible. It just walking around this car, I can't tell you how excited I am. It just, it, it, it brings butterflies to your stomach to see a legendary car like this in a factory condition, 28 years after it's been released. And I mean, it's so hard to find a Supra in this condition. They all have been fast and furiousized, basically. They all have that exhaust, with a single turbo conversion and a thousand horsepower, which is amazing. I love that as well, but there's just something special about this. And of course the beautiful rear lights, four lights on each side and the wing, which was massive at the time, it still is of course. And you could also actually order this on your regular naturally aspirated spec Supra. So no one could basically see that you had the non twin turbo version exhaust we've got one exhaust on the left there and they actually had to shave a lot of weight from this car because they felt it was too heavy so things like the targa roof the bonnet are aluminium we've got a magnesium steering wheel but also a dual exhaust they thought that it looked much better to have another one on the right but it was just too heavy so they just got rid of it that is kind of cool it wasn't a lightweight back then something like 1510 kilos it is light by today's standards but they did shave off a lot of weight to make it at least lighter than the predecessor, the Mark III Supra. And it was uh, 45 kilos lighter than that car. So even though it grew, it had dual airbags, ABS, and I don't know, bigger wheels, bigger tires, bigger brakes, bigger everything. It was lighter than the predecessor. And that was one of their goals, basically. Now, I'm also going to open the rear here very carefully and then you can see that well basically everything here looks like it did 28 years ago we've got an original kit here and then we've got the book from the original owner so this is from 1994 rick bought this car from the second owner in germany and it's done 60,000 kilometers and it has all the stamps in the book for the maintenance from Toyota dealers. But this is really cool to see. You can see the original Supra here. Very nice book. And it's even the same spec, this car. You can see the Targa here as well. But this is magnificent to have this in the car as well. Look at that. This is amazing to have with the car. I am nerding out over here. I am enjoying this review a lot more than I should, but 
it's just so special okay so the engine as you probably know this is the three liter inline six two jz gte engine you can see it right there legendary engine and why is this car and mainly this engine why are they so legendary well it was so loved by everyone because in this euro spec it had stronger steel turbochargers than the japanese spec cars it had bigger injectors and in this spec you could actually get this car to like 450 to 500 horsepower with stock internals just by getting a free flowing air intake and exhaust and and a boost controller basically and with those three things you could get between 450 and 500 horsepower already i mean that's before you start changing turbos and stuff like that but it wasn't a legend immediately it basically had a second life when stuff like the fast and the furious and gran turismo i mean who didn't play gran turismo and drove the supra in that game and the fast and the furious stuff like that it just made this car legendary it made everyone want one of these and and rightly so because this engine is a masterpiece and the car itself was so far ahead of its time that it still drives really well today we've got double wishbone suspension all round we've got Bielstein dampers everything has been done so well that it still holds up today and that is an amazing achievement by Toyota what we've got is a twin turbo setup so we've got that 2JZ GT engine which is this engine without the turbos with 220, 230 horsepower. And then with these twin turbos, it delivers 330 horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque. And they are sequential turbochargers. So the first one starts, you know, down low for some loadout torque. And then at 4,000 RPM, a pre-boost configuration starts, you know, basically spooling up the turbos and then from four and a half thousand rpm the second turbo joins in and from that moment on the two turbos work parallel to each other so that is when you have two turbos and you can really feel it you can feel at four and a half thousand rpm that second turbo joining in and just giving you another boost of power now back in the day 330 horsepower was a lot of power for this segment it is basically a big gt car and it was so fast that is part of why it is so legendary of course but look at how this all looks it genuinely looks like it just came out of the factory everything just looks so fresh i just want to touch everything i mean if this doesn't get you excited about cars then what does absolutely awesome to see to have this 28 year old car looking like this it just makes me it kind of makes me nervous as well but you just feel like you're in the presence of you know of a god basically okay and the interior has had the same treatment so everything looks like it is new it smells like it is new there's nothing no scratches it looks stunning and in here we've got this dash that is clearly pointed towards the driver and everything works and to show you what has been done to this car I'm going to show you a lot of before and after shots of the car so you can see the car from every angle every detail and see what they have done to get this car back to this condition how it looked when they started it was quite a good base to start with this car as i said second owner from germany the car was delivered in germany new and then it had a really good service history it was taken care of well and then the stipped polish point magic was poured over this car to make it look like this wow okay i hope you enjoyed that because those before and after shots are really satisfying to me now let's start it up and you're in for a surprise because this car the original supra couldn't be more different from all those 1000 horsepower chewed supras it's just a quiet civilized fast 
GT and it has nothing to do with like big exhaust bra -pa -pa -pa, whatever it it's just a very civilized and high-tech comfortable car we've got an automatic gearbox so this is a four-speed automatic gearbox with overdrive button right there of course the six-speed manual is the more sought after gearbox especially if you want to tune it but this gearbox kind of fits the purpose of this car as being you know just bone stock and super comfortable gt let's go for a drive in this magnificent supra and well i'll just show you look at this look at these stickers here they are new and then we've got this in here as well everything has been done okay gearbox in drive four speed as i said that is one of the very few things that really make this car show its age because it's a very slow gearbox and you know four gears is not a lot and now i've got overdrive off so that means that we have three gears basically, but that is just better when you drive on a B road because otherwise you're just always in the gear too high. Okay, so driving it. Do you hear that? You can hear the turbos whistling. It is a very cool sound. But other than that, the car doesn't really produce any sound. It is a very civilized straight six sound it's only when you really you know kick down and then at four and a half thousand rpm as i said it just takes off and when that happens it is not a slow car it really isn't it it you kind of have to be in the perfect spot like above four and a half thousand rpm but when you are it moves handling is really good as well it is one of the things that impressed me most when i started driving this car today it, it just feels like a much newer car the the handling the steering is nicely weighted you've got those double wishbones you've got those bilstein dampers it, it has been set up properly for you know it's it is a proper driver's car it's just a proper driver's car from 1994 but i love the weighting of the steering wheel it just makes me miss that full throttle see no sound It's such a civilized car. It, it could be more different from all those 1,000 horsepower you see. It just, it's really, uh, I really like that on, on the other hand. I mean, I really like the fact that, you know, you have this, basically this Japanese grandpa touring GT car. It is a sports car, but it just transforms into this freakish, crazy car and that's what everyone associates this with you know that's what everyone thinks about when they think about a supra but this is the real supra okay so we're going to take it to the autobahn and i'm going to warn you we do need a lot of space to be able to you know get some proper speed but we'll see what we can do just do that exposure the camera But it is also good to see how it feels at high speed. I mean, it drives like it should, like, you know, 60,000 kilometers. Cars, car feels really fresh. So that is full throttle. And you can see that it actually picks up speed very, very well. feels 
quite quick here on the Autobahn because you have, you know, that four and a half plus RPM range at your disposal more often. So that is fourth gear now, top gear, and that is, what is that, 250 on the speedo. But handling is really, really good. I have to let off the throttle. I don't want to get too close to those cars. And I don't want to brake too hard, as I said. But it's, it's really no problem for this car. And even, you know, kicking down, you have, you have a bit more wind and tire noise on the Autobahn. So it is even more quiet, the, the car itself just don't hear it it's just doing its job moving the car without drama so of course we also measured the 100 to 200 time and we did a 14.9 second run uh, which does check out it is close to other you know around 300 to 330 horsepower cars this of course is hampered by uh, the relatively slow automatic gearbox and the fact that it only has four gears so it, it does check out it, it does seem like it has close to its original power which is quite cool. Oh man, it does pick up. That kick down is also, it, it's quite quick actually. So, the gearbox does shift down quite quickly when you want it to. But it's mainly the experience of driving this car, this 28 year old car. Looking at the dash like it's new is, is a really weird experience. It really is. It's much weirder than I thought. So performance wise, uh, this car should be able to do around 290 kilometers an hour if you have enough space. And the manual gearbox version did 5.1 seconds from zero to 100. This automatic is going to be a bit slower than that. I couldn't find any uh, statistics, but you know, you're looking at around six seconds, I think. But it, it really, it really doesn't matter. It's really not about that. It's just about the experience and about you know, getting to know the Supra in its original form. Nice, bro. And it's just so cool to see that, that rear wing in your mirror. And when you look to the right, when you look at your side view mirror on the right side, you can actually see the wing, the tip of the wing in the corner of your eye. So you know it's always there, it's just, hanging on there it, it's absolutely massive so that's it guys for this review the camera is starting to overheat again so i'm going to turn on the ac which actually works really well gets very nice and chilly in here um, but that's it i hope you enjoyed this review of this amazing mark 4 toyota supra as i said if you want or need any of the products that stip polish point offers to bring your car back to this condition go check out the link in the description big thanks to rick at step polish point man you're an awesome guy thank you so much for letting us take your supra so you can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle you can also check out this video on the right or go check out this playlist on the left if you want to watch another one thanks for watching and i'll see you at the next one bye guys